Hello there. This video lecture, we'll be talking about disaster management. Now, disaster management is essentially a branch of managerial function where we look at how we need to deal with the impacts of a particular disaster. And when we say impacts, it leads, it is talking about the impacts on the human life, impacts on the building, on the materials that are there, impact on the economic scene of that particular country or region and the environmental impact. So how we can manage, how we can make sure that these impacts can be, you know, reduced. How do we learn from a particular disaster? How do we prepare for that disaster in future? How so that we can respond better? All of this is comprised or this is what encompasses the disaster management. How do we cope with the particular disaster? Now, in the Bangalore University EVS syllabus, they have clearly mentioned four different disasters for which the disaster management needs to be studied. So, we'll be looking at each one of these in detail. These are earthquakes, cyclones, landslides and floods. The disaster management for floods has been included under a different video which I had done about water resources. You can check out that video over here. So let us look at what are the disaster management methods for earthquakes. Now earthquakes are very very common. These are a type of natural disaster that can occur at any time of the year. Even recently we have had the huge huge earthquake in Turkey and Syria. In fact, there were multiple number of earthquakes over a period of a week. So there have been multiple earthquakes and these earthquakes have caused a huge amount of loss in terms of people. More than 50,000 people have been killed. There have been a lot of people who have been displaced from their homes. A lot of buildings have, you know, come down. So this is a very common disaster in certain parts of the world. Some areas, for example, uh, you know, in India, in, even India is actually a country which is quite disaster prone in some regions. For example, Jammu Kashmir or Gujarat, Assam. These are all, these are areas which are along the tectonic plates boundaries. That is why when the tectonic plates are clashing with each other, it causes earthquakes. And that's why these areas are prone to earthquakes. Or Japan, a country which is most prone to earthquakes. So there are a lot of areas which are prone, which are, you know, frequently affected by earthquakes. And these are having a sudden impact they don't give you much warning we we can't actually fully predict an earthquake we can by uh, continuous monitoring we do, we can predict but sometimes it happens very suddenly and the impact is very sudden often what happens is after an earthquake due to the impact of an earthquake it leads to landslides or tsunami in the coastal area so again one more disaster strikes that particular region so we need to have certain disaster management measures in place to make sure that the impact can be reduced now one of the first methods for preparing is community preparedness this is something that is common for all the disaster managements because we need to ensure that the community the people are well prepared there are a lot of training programs that are con conducted for the architects for the engineers for the builders for the masons so that they can build resistant construction they can use buildings i mean they can construct buildings using materials that are having a flexible foundation or you know there is shock absorbers which are in the building material they use materials like wood or memory alloy which are earthquake resistant so there are different ways in which they can be trained so the people who are constructing buildings have to be trained not only that even the public needs to be trained the community has to be prepared what they should do in case an earthquake strikes where they should run out to what they should not do the do's and don'ts that has to be prepared for the community also we need to make sure that there are strict laws being enforced this is because multi-story buildings should not be allowed in areas which are prone to earthquakes or for example in hilly areas multi-story buildings should not be allowed so laws need to be strict and they need to ensure that these laws are abided by so that in case of an earthquake problems do not occur of course apart from all this there also has to be hazard mapping that is relief measures and disaster assessment has to be done using satellite data but this is slightly difficult in case of earthquakes however it can be done the next disaster that we have is the landslide. Now, landslide, like I told you, is a sort of effect from the earthquake sometimes. Sometimes it's because of heavy rains or, you know, uh, other weather events like there can be uh, uh, heavy winds or 
fast winds that are blowing it can happen due to volcanoes it is basically the downward and the outward movement of earth material so rock debris the soil all of it when it moves downwards that is what we call as a landscape and it can cause severe economic losses it can cause the loss of human life the environment can be completely destroyed as you can see in this picture which has been taken from the coorg landslide in 2018 Coorg in India is especially prone because the there are a lot of resorts and hotels that have been built in eco sensitive zones on the hill top they have built and whenever there is a heavy rain during the rainy season often landslides are very commonly happening in Coorg that is in Karnataka so some of the disaster management techniques for or control measures for landslides include engineering structures which have a strong foundation so that you they don't move they don't you know give away when the earth moves making sure that there are structures which are having a, a sound or a very strong foundation ensuring there is a good vegetation cover vegetation helps in preventing landslides when there are a lot of trees with strong roots these roots hold the soil and landslides can be easily prevented hazard mapping is something that we can do for landslides the moment you know that this area is prone for to landslides due to an earthquake or a or a flood or a storm that is coming in immediately you can ensure that the people are you know evacuated from areas which are prone making sure that there are relief measures in place by hazard mapping restricting the movement of the flood waters making sure there are you know uh, surface drainage that is provided so that the landslide even if it happens can be restricted by building in walls or some kind of a you know a control ditch can be made and of course public awareness and preparedness so awareness has to be spread amongst the public regarding structures which are actually adding on to the landslides to the occurrence of landslides cyclones are one of the major disasters that affects the coastal regions of india because india has a long coastline of more than 7000 kilometers and cyclones are formed when there is a region of low atmospheric pressure that is surrounded by a high atmospheric pressure this results in a swirling atmospheric disturbance along with very strong winds that are blowing in anti clockwise direction anti clockwise if it is the northern hemisphere if it's the southern hemisphere the winds are blowing in the clockwise direction so these strong winds are the ones which are you know causing damage to the infrastructure to the housing the strong winds will cause a lot of heavy rains heavy storm tides will come which will again lead to floods in the coastal region and that obviously will lead to loss of crops or damage to the you know the cables the infrastructure the towers roads rail lines all of these are destroyed because of the force of the wind and the water that is coming due to the cyclones but there are control measures for this and one of the control measures is hazard mapping for prediction because cyclones can be easily predicted we can if we continuously map if we continuously monitor we can predict cyclones we can predict their intensity we can predict the landfall in fact there are a lot of apps that even the public can uh, you know download and we can see the movement of the cyclonic winds we can see where it is going to hit the land at what time it is going to hit the land so it is easy for us to predict and because it is easy for us to predict the cyclones the control measures are that the first thing is by using hazard mapping we can make sure that people are evacuated not much of loss to life occurs of course the structures the infrastructure it is very difficult to save but people can be saved when or the you know the biota or the biotic life can be saved by doing the hazard mapping secondly we need to try and engineer structures for which can withstand cyclones as well that is structures which can withstand the force of the wind that is coming we need to make sure that the underground communication lines are installed especially in places in on the coastal regions we need to make sure that the communication lines are underground so that even if a cyclone occurs the communication is not getting disrupted we have to have a lot of training programs that are you know held so that awareness is spread amongst the people we need to make sure that there are a lot of uh, places for the community shelter in such vulnerable locations there have to be strong halls or you know underground areas where we can have we can house the people in terms of an emergency also we need to make sure that there are land use control so there is land use control because uh, many a times what happens is the river embankments are not protected people start encroaching the water bodies and that again is causing a lot of you know a, a problem to the wind flow or to the water flow so we have to make sure that the river embankments the embankments on the sides of the the coastal regions are protected they are intact they are strong so that the impact of the wind can be reduced these are the different disaster management measures 
that can be taken for controlling cyclones, for controlling the other disasters like earthquakes and landslides. I hope this video was useful to all of you and hope to see you all in the next one as well. Thank you.